I'm reading from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood before them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Jonah, Mary mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them as idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Thanks be to God. In all the years that I have preached sermons on Easter morning, I don't think I have ever preached from Luke's version of this story until today. Many of you know there's a three-year cycle to the lectionary, and every year the main, the main gospel lifted up is John's gospel. And then depending on the year, you can choose from Matthew, Mark, or Luke, but John's gospel is the one that seems to be the, the favored one. And there's good reason for that. John's gospel is so complete you all know the story. Mary Magdalene in John's gospel goes to the tomb. She sees the tomb, the stone has been rolled away. She runs to tell the men and Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved run to the tomb and they make the assumption that Christ's body has been taken away. So the men take a look inside and they go in and they find just the burial clothes there. And then the men go home. But in John's gospel, Mary stays there weeping by the tomb and actually gets to see the risen Lord. He goes and tells her, you go and tell the others. And that's what she does. So it's a nice, tidy, complete story. Luke's gospel isn't like that at all. <laughs> and one of the reasons I think I have not liked it in the past is because the women have this incredible faith-filled moment at the tomb. And when they go to tell the men, Luke says, these words seem to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Urgh! I hate that part. <laughs> How could they not believe Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and all the other women who were with them. These are not strangers to them. These women, according to Luke, were with them as Jesus carried out his ministry in Galilee. In fact, Luke says earlier that these women provided for them out of their resources. These are the people who are supporting Jesus and the disciples as they go about their ministry. Not only that, these are the women that stood at a distance with some of the other disciples after all the crowds dispersed and watched Jesus die. These are the same women that were there when his body was taken down from the cross and laid in the tomb. And now, these are the women who are going to have the courage to show up at that tomb, even knowing there are people out there that want to wipe out Jesus and all of his followers. These women have the courage to show up at the tomb to properly bury his body. 
these are not frail little creatures that are subject to flights of fancy. These women have hung in there through everything all the way to the bitter end. And so I think I just hate that part where it says the men thought it was an idle tale and they didn't believe them. But there's another reason that I really never clung on to Luke's gospel in this part, and that's because nobody sees Jesus in this version at the tomb. It, it just felt sort of incomplete to me. You know, how could nobody see him there? And where's the joy? And where's the excitement? How does that work? But somehow this year it struck me that maybe Luke's gospel comes closer than all the others to our own experience. Because we don't see Jesus right now in the flesh either. We can't reach out and physically touch him. We don't audibly hear his voice, but still, we dare to believe. Barbara Brown Taylor says it's funny that we talk about people being witnesses to the resurrection. She points out that nobody claims to have actually been there at the moment when Jesus was resurrected in that tomb. Nobody knows exactly what happened there, or at least nobody passed it down so that the rest of us might know. Barbara Brown Taylor says, though Christians speak of witnesses to the resurrection, there were no witnesses. Everyone who saw Jesus alive again saw him after he was resurrected. Resurrection, she says, is always announced with Easter lilies and the sound of trumpets, bright streaming light. But it didn't happen that way. Whatever happened to Jesus, Taylor says, between Saturday and Sunday, happened in the dark with the smell of damp stone and dug earth in the air. It happened where no one but him could talk about it later, and he did not talk about it, she says, at least not so anyone could explain it to anyone else. So what actually happened at that moment of resurrection remains a mystery, and rightfully so. If we could explain it all wonderfully and scientifically and nail down all of the details, my guess is none of us would be here today. We'd be bored with this story after 2,000 years. But God is bigger than that, bigger than us, bigger than what the finest minds of anybody on earth can explain. And so we have to rely on faith and what we are told here. We know that something monumental happened that day because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all share this story, but they all tell it differently. And you know, in some ways, that makes it almost more believable. When a crowd sees something extraordinary happen in front of them, each one of them grasps in their mind to try to make sense of what they're seeing. And we fill in gaps where there are things that we don't understand. And everybody's coming from a little bit different perspective. And so Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell different stories, but the same story, basically, that something extraordinary happened at that tomb and all the days that came after. So in some ways, Luke's gospel really spoke to me this year. The women come early at dawn, to the tomb. That's something that's shared among all the Gospels. They find that the stone has been rolled away, and in Luke's Gospel, they go into the tomb. What courageous people they are, having just witnessed the authorities kill Jesus, knowing that following him is something that will still be suspect. These women go into the tomb. I think had I come that day and seen that stone rolled away, I would have been afraid that the enemies of Jesus were in there, and I probably would have gone back home. But they go in. And when they do, they don't find the body. Luke says they're perplexed, and can you just see them there standing in this empty tomb wondering what the heck has happened? Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes are standing between them, and Luke says the women are now terrified. 
Well, I can think of two reasons to be terrified. One is that these men might indeed be the authorities come to arrest you, but they're in dazzling white clothes. And the Bible often used that as a hint for us that these are angels. And almost always in the Bible, when an angel of God or God personally shows up to people, the people are terrified. That's why God and the angels have to go around all the time saying, be not afraid every time you want to talk to people because people get scared when they're in the presence of something so holy. And so these angels ask a profound question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? And the women likely are still perplexed. And so then the angels say, he is not here. Well, that's obvious. They see that. But then the angel says something extraordinary. He is risen. And I would imagine there's still a perplexed look on the faces. What do you mean? He is risen. And then there's this gentle nudge from the angels. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Jesus told them this would happen Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the third day. He told these women and he told the men too, and now the women do remember. And they go back to tell the others. This is an act of faith. They have not seen Jesus yet, but they are remembering what he said. And it fits with what they're seeing now, even though they don't see him. It might be hard to believe, but they go back to tell the others. Nobody sees Jesus at the tomb in this story. But they believe in his word, and now they see confirmation of that word these are the things he had said would happen that seemed too outlandish, too incredible to believe when he said them. And so they sort of drifted off from their memories. Martin Marty says that there are sometimes stories that are just too weird to be taken seriously. And sometimes the people telling the stories are just too strange for us to believe, and so we dismiss the stories. Well, even though Luke says that the men thought this was an idle tale, just too strange to believe, and that they did not believe the women, something was at work in Peter. We don't get told what it was, but suddenly he gets up and he runs to the tomb. Maybe he just wants to see, you know, why it's empty, if he can figure it out. But maybe there's something else. Luke's gospel says that he doesn't go in. He just stoops down and he looks and he sees the, the burial cloths lying there. And then he goes home amazed at what happened. Now we can be amazed in a lot of ways. We can be amazed at something terrible. Or we can be amazed at something wonderful. He might have been amazed that somebody could stoop so low as to rob the grave of a man who's been crucified. Or he may have been amazed that what Jesus had said now appeared to be true. So maybe there was that hope beginning to really burst out in Peter. Maybe he too was remembering what Jesus had said. And maybe even though this story is a strange one and really almost impossible to believe, maybe the women and Peter and all the others who had heard Jesus say this would happen someday remembered that the person who told them that was absolutely trustworthy. And so the people on this day begin to hope against all doubt, against all things, that this is something extraordinarily good rather than extraordinarily bad. Luke's gospel is going to go on to tell us about two men walking to Emmaus, how they encounter the resurrected Jesus. 
how they don't recognize him for a while, and how they tell him about these women that went to the tomb and said that Jesus was gone and maybe he was resurrected. And the men went to the tomb too, but they didn't see Jesus. And Jesus will rebuke them for being foolish and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Those guys will run back to tell the disciples that they actually have seen Jesus and still there will be some doubt. And finally, Jesus is going to appear to the disciples in person. But that's a story for another day. What actually happened in that tomb some 2,000 years ago? Who knows for sure? We can't explain it. But the more important question The question that will shape the way we live our lives and maybe the way that we help shape the world is who believes. Amen. Now will the ushers please come forward.